a few days ago I published this uh, video about how to test an IF ceramic filter. And I will pen over it, uh, it somewhat. I want to refer to the uh, original video where you can find the complete schematic, the circuit about the test oscillator, etc. etc. And the idea was here uh, that we say uh, try to find the bandwidth of a ceramic filter. And in the earlier video I also have shown how that uh, uh, how such a ceramic filter looks like. Anyway. So one movement back for everyone interested in this circuit in the very very past I had some complaints that I did not show the per, uh, sorry the schematic perfectly. Anyway, this was the first video. Now we are going to the video of today, and that is the IF amplifier. I have already told in that earlier video that you can make. Uh, um, an IF filter sharp by um, say mounting a capacitor here in the collector lead the collector goes to the uh, ceramic filter but anyway um, that is of course a very very good idea but I had mounted here a small capacitor of say 47 picofarad and also here 47 picofarad and I could not get that uh, uh, radio circuit here working properly. Of course um, that had everything that had everything to do with the say uh, capacitor with which I have tried to make that band with more sharp. And it surely is a very, very good way. But of course, when you make a uh, shortwave receiver, it's a good idea uh, to, in the first in the first stages of the development, keep that band with white, say eight kilocycles or ten kilocycles. These filters are normally made for say uh, 8 kilocycles or 10 kilocycles white the, the bandwidth that's what I mean so they uh, say uh, resonate on 4, 6, 8 kilocycles with a bandwidth of say approximately 8 to 10 kilocycles this is the final IF amplifier that I made and it works properly very very good on shortwave and I will give a demonstration of that uh, radio and I will surely give the complete circuit in the future because I have to do some experiments especially uh, at the high frequency stage. This is the mixer it's a classic mixer made with a BF199 that's a high frequency transistor here we send in the, send in the amplified antenna signal in this case around uh, say 5 MHz and around 10 MHz and here we send in the signal of the VFO and that VFO that's a, a variable frequency oscillator was published earlier and it's here and it's now uh, in its more or less definite stage um, here is the tank circuit the, the, uh, the coil uh, LC coil for the say 10 megahertz band 
and here is the LC coil for the um, say 5 MHz band. And the principle was showed in an earlier video and I will give the link. Uh, we vary the voltage to the field effect transistor and that gives a frequency difference. And of course that frequency uh, does not differ very much on the low um, frequency, say approximately 300 kilo cycles. But on the high frequencies here generated with this coil, the frequency variation is approximately 800 kilo cycles. So that means that you can receive quite a lot of stations on shortwave with this uh, VFO, uh, the variable frequency oscillator. And I also made an, uh, say <coughs> an adaptation. I've used now a, a coarse tuning potentiometer here and a fine tuning potentiometer here. I will surely give the complete circuit in the future. So that makes it possible that you can uh, say uh, receive radio stations on shortwave between 5 in the 5 megahertz band and in the 10 megahertz band. And the stability is good enough. I've tested it yesterday. Uh, the radio stations uh, were present. The oscillator did not drift so much. Of course, it is a kind of critical with um, this type of circuit uh, in which the oscillator, say, depends on its frequency for a big part on the stability of the power supply. Anyway, here is the whole circuit again, power supply, IF amplifier here. And in that IF amplifier, you can see here that there is a potentiometer that forwards bias the detection diode. And I found here that it was a, a, a 1N60 germanium diode, the only detection diode, as far as I know, that you can buy nowadays in the 1970s and 80s you could buy much more different types of detection diodes, say for instance the OA types, the OA81, OA79. Uh, they were made by Philips in the past. Anyway, uh, this diode needs a certain, say, uh, forward bias. That's given here by this potentiometer. So let's listen to the shortwave again. Here the IF amplifier. Here that potentiometer that biases the detection diode. Here the amplification potentiometer of the IF amplifier. Here the potentiometer that sets the mixing process between the VFO and the uh, antenna amplifier. I will also publish in the future that antenna amplifier, but I have to do somewhat more experiments anyway. Let's listen to what this circuit can bring. <laughs> Here you hear the fading on shortwave. That means that the, circuit, the, that the radio station fades away, uh, gets more fierce, fades away again in a certain say pattern. And well, that's common to a uh, shortwave and uh, the normal uh, solution to solve that problem is the automatic uh, amplification control. And I'm going to make that circuit 
but that's uh, say a next uh, a next project. This is only the basics. And here you see that the coarse tuning and the fine tuning uh, adding a different voltage to the fat oscillator works properly. Tuning coarse. And tuning fine. Fine tuning. Again, fine tuning. So, uh, well, course tuning here. The whole circuit is connected to an indoor antenna of approximately 4 meters and I had a very nasty click sound. Uh, I think uh, it was generated by my electrical metered meter that constantly pushes say signals to the internet. Say it's a smart smart electrical meter anyway for say the main supply etc etc and I have solar panels etc so perhaps that that um, unit uh, causes these strange say click signals so I have mounted here that uh, ferrite uh, ferrite type coil that works quite fine anyway back to the reception And what's very, very important is that the high F amplification that's set here with this potentiometer and this field effect transistor and this high frequency transistor, this part is not used at the moment, but anyway, I uh, have now directly connected uh, the signal out of the field effect transistor source to the mixer that's here. Uh, the high F frequency is very important. With a two fierce high F frequency, all the stations say uh, are covered with noise. But with a proper, a proper uh, say value of high frequency amplification, you can receive in a very good way. Uh, radio uh, shortwave radio stations, but don't give that uh, radio a too high uh, high frequency amplification. I will demonstrate it now. I will go from the zero high frequency amplification to the max and over that max. Here you get a kind of too high amplification that gives a kind of distortion. So this is the best position. So a lot of stations here. Uh, that depends, of course, on how the circuit was made, but I will, will give more information in the future. <laughs>